Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Tables can have many purposes in Word. You can use tables to manipulate data like a spreadsheet program, you can use them to simply store data, or you can use them to assist you in structuring the layout of content within a document. While many people often think of cells within a table as only recording text and numbers, you can place any content that you want into cells such as pictures. You can edit individual cells or create and delete entire columns and rows of cells. However, before we look at manipulating tables, we need to look at how to create a table in Word. In this lesson, you will begin by examining how to create a basic structured table layout. These types of tables, which resemble grids, have a consistent structure and are often used for data storage. After creating structured tables, we will then look at creating tables that have an irregular cell structure. These types of tables are often used for assisting in document layout. For example, if you wanted to create a coupon cutout for people to use, you could place the coupon information into cells within a table to enhance the appearance of the final printed document. To create a basic structured table, click the Table button that appears in the Tables button group on the Insert tab in the ribbon to display a drop-down menu. To create a structured table, roll your mouse pointer out and over the grid shown in the drop-down menu by the number of columns and rows that you want to insert into the table. The dimensions of the table will be shown above the grid as the number of columns by the number of rows. Click your mouse when you have the desired number of columns and rows highlighted in order to insert a table of the displayed dimensions into your document. After creating the table, you will probably want to perform data entry. Moving into cells to enter information is easy. Either click into the cell within which you want to enter information, or press the tab key on your keyboard to move from cell to cell, from left to right, and top to bottom. Keep in mind that if you press the tab key when you are in the last cell in a table, which is the lower right corner cell, Word will insert a new row for you at the bottom of the table so that you can continue performing data entry. Cells can also contain multiple lines of text if needed. Entering text into a cell works in the same way as when entering text into a document. When the text reaches the cell's border, it will automatically wrap itself down to the next line. You really only need to press the Enter key on your keyboard if you want to create a new paragraph within a cell. Another way to create a structured table is to click the Table button that appears in the Tables button group on the Insert tab of the ribbon. Then select the Insert Table command. This opens the Insert Table dialog box. In this dialog box, enter the number of columns and the number of rows that you want the table to possess into the two boxes provided in the Table Size section. In the Auto Fit Behavior section, you can set how Word determines what size to make the columns in the table. You can choose Fixed Column Width if you want the columns to be a set size. You can then use the Adjacent Spinner to set the width yourself. You can select the Auto Fit to Contents option to let Word adjust the width of the columns based on the content that is placed into them. You can select the Auto Fit to Window option to let Word adjust the column to fit the window width. You then click the OK button to insert a table of the specified dimensions into your document. We will now look at creating a table by drawing the individual cells by hand. While it is possible to use this method to create an organized structured table, it is more often used to create a layout for your document. It's also used to make minor adjustments to a structured table. To use this method, click the Table button that appears in the Tables button group on the Insert tab of the ribbon, and then select the Draw Table command from the drop-down menu. When you select this command, your mouse pointer turns into a pencil icon when you hold it over the document area. At that point, click and drag to draw the table cells that you want. You can also click and drag within a cell from one side to the other in order to split the cell into additional columns and rows of cells. Note that this tool remains enabled after you finish drawing the table cells. To turn this feature off, click the Table button that appears in the Tables button group on the Insert tab of the ribbon again, and select the Draw Table command again, or simply press the Escape key on your keyboard. Notice that when you initially select the Draw Table command and then start drawing your table cells, you will see two new contextual tabs appear on the ribbon. This is the Table Tools contextual tab. This tab contains two other tabs, the Design tab and the Layout tab. On the Design tab, you can use the buttons found within the Borders button group to change the line style, line thickness, 
and line color of the lines that you draw by using the Draw Table button. You can use the Line Style drop-down to select a different line style to apply. Likewise, you can use the Line Weight drop-down to select a thickness of line to draw. You can use the Pen Color drop-down to select the line color. You can then use the Draw Table button to draw lines that match the settings you selected. You can also click and drag over lines that you have already drawn within a table to redraw the lines using the new formatting. When you are learning to draw table cells, you will inevitably make a few errant lines. You can erase mistakes by using the Eraser button. This button appears in the Draw button group on the Layout tab of the Table Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon. When you click this button, your mouse pointer will turn into an eraser when you hold it over the document. Place it over the line that you want to remove and then click and drag the mouse over the line that you want to erase. It can be a bit tricky at first. The line that you will delete should appear highlighted before you release the mouse button. Also, this button, much like the Draw Table button, will remain enabled until you turn it off. You can do this by clicking the Eraser button once more, or by simply pressing the Escape key on your keyboard. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.